With the final climate deal now done, work to transition the world away from fossil fuels will soon begin. Sustainability and the Environment Minister Grace Fu says that this final outcome from COP28 may not please every party, but it represents a significant stride towards global collective action. She was speaking to reporters about her key takeaways from Dubai. Are we totally happy with all the elements in there? The answer is no. But is it the package that is significant and meaningful to us? I think it is. And I think ultimately that's the test. Um, a good outcome is where everyone goes back a little bit unhappy, but still happy to have a package. Uh, the fact that we have language on fossil fuel subsidies, for example, is significant because this was also an element that many parties did not want to mention, given that you know, at this moment we are all facing cost of living issue, inflationary pressures. But the fact that it was mentioned in there, again, I think it's something that we are glad to see. What she wasn't so glad to see was the lack of movement on what's known as Article 6 of the Paris Climate Agreement on the rules of engagement around voluntary carbon markets. This comes as Singapore inked several deals during the 12-day summit to generate and buy carbon credits from countries including Papua New Guinea, Senegal and Rwanda. On Article 6, we are disappointed that there was no progress. We will have rules we will have to rely on rules and guidelines from COP26 and 27. But to facilitate a high integrity and robust carbon markets, we will want to work with like-minded countries and partners to develop the frameworks needed, building on our existing efforts such as the Climate Action Data Trust and Implementation Agreement. And this will be able to support countries in their implementation and not hold up climate action. For more on the implications of COP28 for Singapore, we speak with Shireen Fock, partner and head of our impact plan at KPMG in Singapore. Well, Ms. Fock, thanks so much for joining us on this bulletin. Now, this deal agreed today to transition away from fossil fuels. Now, we heard a minister there talking about issues with cost of living, inflationary pressures, and these are things Singapore as an economy highly dependent on energy. We are host to a large logistics hub, a petrochemical industry and power generation sectors. And what impact will this deal have on Singapore's economy? So the move from fossil fuels is definitely going to be impactful to our economy as we know it. But when we talk about Singapore being a logistics hub, I think we have also uh, transited the term of logistics hub from, say, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, we remain very central to many parts of trading of physical goods, but more and more so in the last 20 or 30 years, our strategy as a country has been to move into high-value services, uh, including financial services, as well as uh, technology flows and innovation flows. So in that sense, um, there is a shift in our economic construct, and therefore, um, also as a way of mitigating the impact to the country. As for the energy-intensive industries that we are still responsible for as a logistics hub, I think uh, the energy efficiency as well as the supercharged power grid plans that we have as a country will be helpful uh, in changing the source and the makeup of uh, the energy use that we need. Ms. Fogg. What about its implications, the deal's implications for Singapore's green transition and our net zero targets, which we also have? Uh, there is an irony here. Uh, some of our sustainable solutions, they are energy intensive as well. We've got plenty of urban farming and more sort of opportunities and encouragement for that sector. We've got our desalination plants as well. How might this deal change things, if at all, for Singapore and its pursuit of its climate goals? Mm. So I think we need to look at uh, the climate goals in relation to a bigger picture around where Singapore stands in the global economy and what this actually means for us as a country in terms of our competitive advantage. Uh, while we have moved into ways of securing, for example, our water sources. And for us to be able to be competitive in a digital age, um, the, the move to data centres, for example, is important and critical. And uh, we are looking at uh, achieving a good balance uh, between the different 
needs of the economy, um, equity, social equity, as well as energy use. And again, the way that we balance these different components in terms of the kind of energy efficient equipment that we use, as well as uh, the sources of energy, that will be an important part of the mix. All right, Ms. Fu, uh, we heard the sustainability and the environment, Ms. Grace Fu, expressing her disappointment at the lack of progress on Article 6 of the Paris Climate Deal. Now, that specifically refers, mm. if there had been progress, we would have seen updates in the regulations around the generation and buying of carbon credits from countries. Now, Singapore is showing our faith in that. We have inked several deals in just this particular summit alone. So the lack of progress, the lack of update, that means the reliance on old regulations from COP26, COP27, what impact might that have on Singapore's intentions in this particular arena? Mm. I think it is still really significant uh, what we have achieved in COP28 this time around, and fossil fuels being one of the biggest areas which we need to tackle um, in terms of the redistribution of um, uh, energy and use of it. But uh, the lack of progress on Article 6 uh, clearly is uh, rather disappointing. But it doesn't stop Singapore from doing what we need to do and within what we can control. Uh, so our voluntary uh, signatories and, and agreements with different countries um, on carbon trading, uh, it falls back to us to be able to honour these promises and to be able to demonstrate um, how we actually fulfil these responsibilities and build trust in the ecosystem. Because a great deal of why the climate uh, agenda could not progress, um, other than the fact that you know we may have some limitations around technology and geography, it is really back to a uh, uh, absence of trust, perhaps around countries um, when we are negotiating. What would this mean for the economy and for the people? And uh, for Singapore, having progressed uh, so far in the carbon trading and the carbon agreements, it is a strong signal to us that we must continue to move ahead and let not uh, perfection become a limit to progress. Oh, thanks so much for those insights. Shireen Fogg from KPMG Singapore.